I'm your brain, part of the central nervous system. Your cranium's my home, and if you want to learn, then listen. I'm the boss of all the functions in your body. I weigh about three pounds, but I'm the leader of the party. The cerebrum controls your thinking and your muscles. It also stores all memories. Without it, you would struggle. The left cerebrum controls the right side of the body, and the right cerebrum The cerebellum controls your posture and your balance The coordination of your movement is also its talent It's located in the lower back of your brain It is rounded in structure as I've gone on to explain I'm your brain, part of the central nervous system Your cranium's my home and if you want to learn then listen I'm the boss of all the functions in your body I weigh up Your brain stem is at the bottom of your brain Connecting brain to spinal cord to form a neural signal train Your brain stem maintains vital control of your heart and lungs It controls important reflexes to make sure your body runs Your pineal gland produces all your precious melatonin Which can help you sleep at night and makes you wake up in the morning I'm your brain, part of the central nervous system Your cranium's my home and I'm the boss of all the functions in your body I weigh about three pounds but I'm the leader of the party Shop our new store merch and get custom birthday videos with your favorite characters I am your large intestine, though I'm shorter than your small. I'm called your large intestine due to my expanded walls. I'm made up of ten different parts, all connected into one. We'll start at the tip of your appendix, attached to your cecum. The next part of my tubular shape is the ascending colon Which leads to the hepatic flexure so you're learning in this song Your transverse colon runs across your entire abdomen Then turns at your splenic flexure onto the descending colon your curved as shaped sigmoid colon leads to your rectum Which is where your fecal matter meets your anus in your bum I am your large intestine though I'm shorter than your small I'm called your large intestine due to my expanded walls let me tell you how I work and a little bit about me I'm only five feet in length but I'm wide which is why I'm called large C My most important job is absorbing water from your chime If I didn't perform this function you'd have loose stools all the time Millions of bacteria do live inside of me an important one is E. coli its job is very key E. coli breaks down all the chum that your body can digest and produces vitamin K that regulates blood clotting at its best another important job that your large intestine has to play yeah, it excretes all your waste to help your body stay healthy. I am your large intestine, though I'm shorter than your small. I'm called your large intestine due to my expanded walls.
What's that taste? Well, it's your tongue, a muscular organ in everyone. I'm kind of rough with lots of bumps. I always work hard to get my job done. Your tongue is covered in a pink tissue called mucosa. Its main job is to protect deeper tissue when you gnaw. The rough parts of your tongue are called the lingual papillae. They are the small bumps that store taste buds so you enjoy food all day. There are four different types of your tongue's papillae. They're named the filiform, foliate, fungiform, and circumvallate. The frenum is the tether of the front bottom of tongues. It holds your tongue in place so your mouth can move freely while it runs. The back of your tongue is anchored by the hyoid bone. The tongue is vital for many things I will show. What's that taste? Well, it's your tongue, a muscular organ in everyone. I'm kind of rough with lots of bumps. I always work hard to get my job done. The muscles in your tongue are a few we will discuss. The style Ohio and Genio all end in Glossus. Then the Genio and style Ohio ideas. Learning these muscles of your tongue, yeah, it is a must. Your tongue's main job's to help you chew and swallow all your food. It also helps you speak all words to express your present mood. The common amount of taste that your tongue can recognize are the four. I will tell you it may come as a surprise. Sweet, sour, bitter, and salty are the four. But sometimes you taste a fifth called you mommy I adore. What's that taste? Well, it's your tongue, a muscular organ in everyone. I'm kind of rough with lots of bumps. I always work hard to get my job done. When you bite into your food, the chemicals from foods release and sinks into the taste papilla to the taste buds that run deep. Sensory cells transform chemicals into nerve signals that are sent into the brain through the nerve fibers they do go. When the signals reach your brain, that information is passed through your cranial nerves to the brain stem really fast. The medulla oblongata takes all those signals and sends them to the limbic and cortical systems you should know. Perception and emotion are then formed for what you ate, then mixed with smells and texture, which create this thing called taste. What's that taste? Well, it's your tongue, a muscular organ in everyone. I'm kind of rough with lots of bumps. I always work hard to get my job done. Shop our new store merch and get custom birthday videos with your favorite characters. We are not kidding, see, we are your kidneys. The upper abdominal is where we will be. The right and left kidneys do all sorts of cool things you'll see. Please pay close attention, this lesson is free. One fact about your kidneys is we filter all your blood so free. Through the neutrons, there's about one million in each kidney. The kidney shape just like a bean, it's about the size of the fist you see. And its top is covered by your Cortex and the medulla These parts produce certain hormones Your body needs The renal vein and artery Are what bring blood to and from a seat They're attached to us right near where the ureters be Kidneys create hormones that tell the body To make more red blood cells They also regulate your liquids and nutrients real well We are not kidding, see We are your kidneys The upper abdominal is where Pay close attention, this lesson is free! Dirty blood's pumped into kidneys through your renal arteries Which comes directly from your heart's aortic artery The blood then moves to your segmental and small arteries Which puts blood to be filtered by your nephrons that you see Your nephron's job is to filter and expel waste from your blood Then that water waste is sent down to the renal medulla Collecting dark smooth wastewater Strong.
We're your teeth, we're your teeth, your digestive system star. We hope you listen well and you learn just who we are. When you're a newborn, maybe you may have natal teeth. This only occurs in one in two to three thousand babies. A child's mouth has two rows of teeth on the bottom and the top. But you only see twenty before the adult teeth make the swap. You'll have thirty two adult teeth by the young age of thirty. Some birthday videos with your favorite characters. I am your pancreas. I'm about six inches long. I sit behind your stomach, across the back of your abdomen. The anatomy of your pancreas is the first thing I'll explain. There are four main parts to me, and a fifth that it will gain. We'll start with the tail, which sits to the left of your abdomen. This is connected to the body, onto the neck it does extend. The neck's attached to the head, which is the fourth main part that you see, which can be split into two parts as I explain the parts of me. When you split up the head, the head proper is what's on top. Then the unseen it processes at the bottom where it drops. There are two main ducts in the pancreas. You see the pancreatic duct and pancreatic. Accessory. I am your pancreas, I'm about six inches long I sit behind your stomach, across the back of your abdomen The two functions of your pancreas that perform day to day Are called the endocrine and exocrine to keep you all healthy Let's talk about the endocrine system in your pancreas It releases two main hormones from the eyelids of Langer hands Insulin and glucagon are the hormones that release they keep blood glucose real stable so your cells have energy now the exocrine system produce digestive enzymes through the pancreatic duct to the duodenum line the job of the enzymes is to help digest all your food so it's easily absorbed by the small intestine in you so take care of your pancreas so it continues to work well so your food keeps digesting and sends glucose to fuel your cells i am your pancreas I'm about six inches long I sit behind your stomach Across the back of your abdomen I am your pancreas I'm about six inches long I sit behind your stomach Across the back of your abdomen
I am your gallbladder. I am a sack shaped organ you see. I am a gallbladder. Your liver stores its bile in me. My surface is smooth to the touch. I am green in color, now you know that much. And I have several parts. The right and left hepatic ducts are where we will start. Here's the common hepatic duct. Then the cystic duct sits where it is tucked. Then we move to the neck. Which is attached to the body and the rounded fundus To the common bile duct And the pancreatic duct that is what I'm made of I am your gallbladder I am a sac shaped organ you see I am a gallbladder Your liver stores its bile in me I act as a reservoir By storing the bile that your liver does for This bile is made and used To break down fats from all eaten foods When your food leaves your stomach It passes through the duodenum Now that is a fact That is when I began to work Passing the digestive bile through the common bile duct When this bile is out of me I flatten like a deflated balloon, you see Then the liver, it does the rest And when you're done digesting food, that's when I ingest All the new bile to store That the body waits to use, that is what I am for I am your gallbladder a sac shaped organ you see I am a gallbladder Your liver stores its bile in me I am your gallbladder I am a sac shaped organ you see I am a gallbladder Your liver stores its bile in me Shop our new store merch and get custom birthday videos with your favorite characters. How about I lend you a hand and tell you about me? There are 27 bones in the average hand C. Let's start with the tips of my fingers and you'll see.
have a spine, it's what you see. And if you want to learn my parts, watch this video of me. I am your spinal column, I'm made of lots of bones. These bones are called your vertebrae, collectively your spine's their home. The first group we'll look at is the cervical curvature. It's made up of seven vertebrae, we'll learn them, I am sure. The first vertebrae we will discuss are C1 and C2, also known as the atlas and the axis inside of you. The atlas joins the base of the skull you call your head. It's job to support head weight, without it you'd flop instead. The C2 axis allows your C1 and your skull to move about in most directions with Without it, life would be dull. C3 through C7 are there to support your head. Let's move on to the next group after the chorus is said. You have a spine, it's what you see. And if you want to learn my parts, watch this video of me. The next group of your spine we will be looking at is the thoracic curvatures, 12 vertebrae intact. Each vertebrae we see begins with the letter T. The T stands for thoracic, let's take a look and see. T1 through T12 are bigger than the group in your neck. Because the spine supports more weight the further down we check. At the bottom of this group begins the lumbar curvatures. Five vertebrae start with the letter L, you'll learn I'm sure. L1 through L5 brings you down to the sacrum. The fuse bone between your hips and the pelvis it becomes. Below that is your cossacks, also called the tailbone. It's a triangular shaped fused vertebrae, you know. You have a spine, it's what you see. And if you want to learn my parts, watch this video of me. There are 23 discs in the human spine. The intervertebral discs is their name you will find. These discs help you flex the hard vertebrae bone between most of your vertebrae they are shown they are flexible discs that look like tires on your car the outer rings the annulus and the nuclear center isn't far helping you bend and flex is the disc's main job and running through the center spine is the spinal cord at large it connects your brain to all your body's nerves so take care of your spine because that's what your body deserves you have a spine it's what you see and if you want to learn my parts watch this video of me you have a spine it's what you see and if you want to learn my parts watch this video of me shop our new store merch and get custom birthday videos with your favorite characters Esophagus. I am your esophagus. Esophagus. Attached to the back of your trachea. Esophagus. Digestive systems muscular too. Esophagus. I bring your food down to the stomach and you. I live in front of your spinal column. I'm right beyond the trachea and hop that pumps. I connect the throat to the stomach in you Before I reach your stomach, your diaphragm I pass through My outer muscles are what help me to push through These muscles contract in wave motions to help me push it through This wave motion is called peristalsis Now let's take a look at the muscles that help me do this The inner to the outer walls of your esophagus are The longitudinal muscle sits on my outside While the circular muscle sits in the middle inside The inner circular muscle wraps around the esophagus It contracts by squeezing together just like a closed fist It squeezes simultaneously with the longitudinal muscle Which runs up and down the esophagus this long hollow tunnel Lining the hollow center of the esophagus the 
trachea in youth and the upper esophageal sphincter will stay closed until the brain tells it to open to let your food flow. When food's in your esophagus, peristalsis occurs. That's when circular and longitudinal muscles do work. These two muscles contract in the wave motion shown. Of 24 bones, I 
expand when you breathe and your chest is my home let's stop by looking at all these bones in me they wrap around your body as you plainly see this is the body of the sternum front and center on stage the bottom part of the breastbone in everyone's rib cage manubrium's the top part of the sternum on me the xiphoid process is the final bone in the sternum family from the top of the sternum that i've already explained are seven ribs on either side of me with an honest name they are called the true ribs in the human body they're also named the sternal ribs of your chest cavity numb your rib cage i keep your inside safe attach to your spine your vital organs i encase numb your rib cage made up of 24 bones i expand when you your chest is my home the remaining five pairs of ribs that complete the bones in me are located at the bottom of my cage i guarantee these five pairs of flat bones are called the false ribs you see because their cartilage doesn't reach the sternum directly coastal cartilage is what connects these bones to the front of me this cartilage is transparent and is called hyaline when you look at the back of the human the head of each rib, the radiate ligaments attach, the rib cage to the thoracic vertebrae, that's how they latch. Back to the front of your body, these two bones are clavicles, they attach the scapula to the sternum and play an important role. Numb your rib cage, I keep your inside safe, attach to your spine, your vital organs I encase. Numb your rib cage, made up of 24 bones, I expand when you your chest is my home two of the vital organs in which it's my job to protect are the heart and the lungs without my protection they'd be wrecked i'm one of the strongest structures that does exist in you so take care of your rib cage and everything that you do numb your rib cage i keep your inside safe attach to your spine your vital organs i encase numb your rib cage made up of 24 bones I expand when you breathe and your chest is my home numb your rib cage i keep your inside safe attach to your spine your vital organs i encase numb your rib cage made up of 24 bones i expand when you breathe and your chest is my home mama muscular sack i'm called your bladder I carry urine from your body straight down into the body I'm a muscular sack, I'm called your bladder Your kidneys make your water waste and have stored in just one place Your bladder is the size of a pear when empty And is made of all the parts that you're about to see Here's a picture of the bladder's anatomy Located in the interior pelvis abbey The peritoneum covers it's the serous membrane and I'm glad you're learning all this The ureters bring urine waste from the kidneys Smooth muscles move it down using peristalsis you see Urine enters the bladder through ureteral openings And fills the bladder up like a leaky ground spring The detrusor muscle controls the bladder's fluid flow Lined with inner mucosa encased in outer membrane though The urethral sphincter all the waste you're in into the urethra where urination does begin the external urethral sphincter is what you control to allow the amount of urine you put in the toilet bowl i'm a muscular sack i'm called your bladder i carry urine from your body straight down into the body i'm a muscular sack i'm called your bladder your kidneys make your water waste and have stored in just one place Your kidneys filter all the blood in your body If you wanna learn more, watch my video on kidneys When water waste separates from the kidneys, it will exit Your ureters start the process of peristalsis This process moves the urine to where it should be stored To the bladders where it's headed, I hope you're not bored When the urine reaches your
muscle to contract While the internal urethral sphincter opens, that's a fact The external urethral sphincter relaxes as well And the urine exits your body making you feel swell Mama muscular sac, I'm called your bladder I carry urine from your body straight down into the body I'm a muscular sac, I'm called your bladder your kidneys make your water waste and have stored in just one place. I'm your larynx, I'm the reason you can talk and the reason you can sing. A hollow muscular organ, sit and learn, I'll do my thing. First, let's look at your larynx, gently rub under your chin. When you feel that pointy bump, that's the area, man. Let's look deep.
skin. Then there is the dermis, the lower inner layer of skin. It plays an important role of the three layers we discuss within. It contains blood and lymph vessels that carry cells that fight infection and disease, and glands that produce sweat, which help regulate the body temperature that you need. The pores also secrete sebum oil, so your skin does not dry out, and hair follicles that make and hold your hair, which you need without a doubt. I am your skin, made of three layers within. I'm the largest organ of the body, but up to four millimeters thin. I'm your skin, protected by keratin. I help control your core temperature and my color.
I'm your skull, I'm made up of 22 bones I protect the all-important brain while it calls me its home I'm your skull, I support the soft tissue on your head A framework of bone or cartilage, this knowledge I spread The cranial bones are the first lesson you'll learn about These eight bones make up your cranium to protect your brain without a doubt The frontal bone is a bone found in the forehead region shown here The two parietal bones, one on each side of your head, just appear Two temporal bones form parts of the side and the base of the cranium structure The occipital bone joins the parietals along the lambdoidal suture The ethmoid bone in the skull separates the nasal cavity from the brain The sphenoid bone is at the center of the skull as I just explained I'm your skull, I'm made up of 22 bones I protect the all-important brain while it calls me its home I'm your skull, I support the soft tissue on your head A framework of bone or cartilage, this knowledge I spread Onto the facial bones, there are 14 of them shown here The bones that make up a portion of your face in which we endear Here's the mandible, the only movable bone in the skull I said And two maxillae, one on each side of the upper jaw and your head The vomer bone joins the ethmoid bone to create the nasal septum in you Two palatine bones and the maxillae complete the hard palate, it's true The two nasal bones form the bridge of your nose Two zygomatic bones form the shape of your cheekbones as this picture shows Two inferior nasal conchae are located in your nose as well Two lacrimal bones run lateral to the maxillary bones, they're swell I'm your skull, I'm made up of 22 bones I protect the all-important brain while it calls me its home I'm your skull, I support the soft tissue on your head A framework of bone or cartilage, this knowledge I spread I'm your skull, I'm made up of 22 bones I protect the all-important brain while it calls me its home I'm your skull, I support the soft tissue on your head A framework of bone or cartilage, this knowledge I spread
what this means I am purple five inches long And I'm shaped like a bean I'm your spleen You will learn what this means I produce antibodies And I keep your blood clean I'm the spleen, the largest organ In the lymphatic system You don't need me, but if removed from your body You'll be more prone to infection The spleen is located Under the rib cage above the stomach Here in the upper left quadrant Of the abdomen, the space I share What's the anatomy of the spleen? Yeah, the spleen's part I will teach you this now While you look at the splenic work of art here you see the splenic hilum and the gastric surface There's the pancreatic and renal surface Now repeat this The splenic artery supplies oxygenated blood to the spleen And the splenic vein drains the blood from the spleen If you know what I mean Let's take a look inside the spleen to learn more of its parts There are two main types of tissue in me And that's where we'll start The first main tissue is called the red pulp Of this I will tell it filters blood of antigens organisms and defective red blood cells. The second main tissue is called white pulp. We'll view this as well. It's part of the immune system, mainly made up of white blood cells. The trabeculae of the spleen is the framework within, which is attached to the capsule. It surrounds the spleen and it's thin. Vascular sinusoids are white vessels that drain into pulp veins. We'll learn how this all works, but first let's sing again. I am your spleen. You will learn what this means I am purple five inches long And I'm shaped like a bean I'm your spleen You will learn what this means I produce antibodies And I keep your blood clean All the functions of your spleen Are really complex But I'll explain the basic functions In the next few steps Red blood cells last 120 days Delivering oxygen to your body When they're damaged Entering the spleen recycled is what they be. Healthy cells flow through but those that are in their unhealthy stages are broken down by large white blood cells that are called macrophages. This all happens in the red pulp tissue that we talked about. These macrophages main job is to filter all the damaged cells out. These old red blood cells are turned into conjugated bilirubin which is excreted through bile out of your body then. The white pulp consists entirely of lymphoid tissue. Here I will explain the basic of what it does for you when you get sick or have some sort of nasty disease the lymphoid tissue within the white pulp sets your body at ease it creates white blood cells to fight off the sickness and then it also makes antibodies that bind to specific antigens both white blood cells and antibodies fight sickness and disease enabling them to be cleared from the circulation in your body the spleen stores up to a cup of blood for your safety ready to be released if there's a significant loss of blood you see many platelets are also stored within the blood in the spleen to help form blood clots to prevent further blood loss if you know what I mean please take care of your body so you don't get sick and if you do the spleen will be there to help you fix it I am your spleen you will learn what this means I am purple five inches long and I'm shaped like a bean I'm your spleen you will learn what this means I produce antibodies and I keep your blood clean This is a heart size comparison Of animals in this world In which we all are one We'll start with a mouse and end at a blue whale Each heart has to beat all day long We'll show you Scale. I'm a mouse heart with dimensions of 10 to 4.2 millimeters That's roughly 16th of an inch and that is true My heart rate's 310 to 840 beats per minute Let's see how many beats that is, I'm always in it, two in it 310 beats per minute is 18,600 beats per hour 446,000 beats per day, that's my power The adult human heart is about the size of a fist I'm about A cow has 
a heart rate between 48 and 84 beats per minute Let's see what that amounts to when we get in it At 48 beats per minute, I can beat 2800 beats per hour That's 69,000 beats per day, I never feel sour A horse's heart weighs approximately 1% of its body weight So a thousand pound horse has a 10 pound heart, it's so great The heart rate of a horse ranges from 28 to 48 beats per minute At 28 beats per minute liver and your skin also contain lymphatic tissue let's see how it works from within your body's made of watery liquid that fills the spaces between the cells this liquid's called interstitial fluid how it becomes lymph fluid i will tell lymph fluids formed when interstitial fluids collected through lymph capillaries lymph carries viruses bacteria and waste material that's scary lymph fluids transported through lymphatic vessels to your lymph nodes your lymph nodes are the place where inspections of your lymph take place you know lymphocytes are your immune cells that inspect your lymph if your lymphocytes find a virus or disease your lymph nodes blow up like a blimp your lymphocytes may call in help from resident macrophages here macrophages will attack the unwanted virus that appeared when the lymph fluid in the lymph nodes are all clean the lymph continues to flow through the lymphatic vessels if you know what i mean clean lymph fluid re-enters at the end of the subclavian vein to be mixed in with your blood cells once again so take care of your body and make sure you clean your hands please eat organic fruits and vegetables if you can the lymphatic system is a network of tissues and organs that rid the body of toxins wasting unwanted material to the lymphatic system's main job is to transport the fluid lymph it contains white blood cells that fight infection through the body within each lymph node is surrounded by a fibrous capsule i'd say which extends inside the lymph node to form trabeculae afferent lymphatic vessels allow lymph fluid to enter lymph nodes but when lymph fluid leaves it uses efferent lymphatic vessels shown see these valves prevent backflow of lymph fluid on track so the fluid only flows in one direction and doesn't go back the depressed area of the surface of the lymph node is called hilum the nodules of these odd looking shaped things now we're done the lymphatic system is a network of t- 
tissues and organs that rid the body of toxins wasting unwanted material to the lymphatic system's main job is to transport the fluid lymph it contains white blood cells that fight infection through the body within I am a myocyte, your muscles are made up of me Here's some of the 650 muscles in the human body We'll start with the deltoids that sit on the shoulders of your arms There are three parts to your deltoid that I'll teach you with some charm The interior fibers are on the front side of you While the lateral fibers sit on the top of the shoulders, that's two The third part's called posterior that sits on your back all three make up your deltoid muscles now how about that the next muscle we'll look at are the pectorals on your chest there are two parts to this muscle that i hope you never rest there's a pectoral minor which is connected to your ribs then the pectoral major it makes your chest look really big on the upper arm is your bicep they help you lift heavy things the bicep bridge Outside while I sing, while the bicep breaches sure head lets you lift things with no harm. We'll take a look at the triceps on the back side of your arm. There's a lateral long and medial hand which make up the three parts that concludes the triceps. Very complex anatomy. I am a myocyte. Your muscles are made up of me. Here's some of the 650 muscles in the human body. Let's look at the
secrete melatonin highest in the middle of the night to keep you asleep until the first daylight. Melatonin levels decrease when it's closer to dawn and drops down during the day so you don't yawn. The schedule of melatonin release is regulated by signals from the retina from the light outside. These signals from the retina travel to a nucleus in us called the superchiasmatic nucleus. Then that signal travels to the pineal gland. The nucleus and the pineal work hard hand in hand. The superchiasmatic nucleus has a main function. It's to control circadian rhythms to keep you having fun. The superchiasmatic nucleus also uses melatonin, I say, as a signal to know the time of day. When melatonin levels are at their highest in the hours of the night when it is the darkest that signals the circadian rhythms to be in a nocturnal stage which should keep you asleep until the break of day then your melatonin levels drop dramatically to keep you awake during the day you see your pineal glands important so please take care of me so you can enjoy life while rested and carefree I'm the pineal gland located in the midline of your brain a small endocrine gland and now you know my name I'm the pineal gland a ductless gland that secretes a hormone called melatonin directly to the bloodstream 